Hello, so it's January the 20th, 2021, and today we look at gold, which has had a rather disappointing start to 2021. And by the way, somebody on YouTube has been impersonating me, so if you get a message from someone pretending to be me, perhaps with my photo on it, asking you to phone a broker in Oslo to buy Bitcoin, it is not me. Right, so gold. Now, it began the year at around $1,950 an ounce and it had, had a really strong finish to 2020. Things were looking up, looked like it was going to retest its previous high. And then come 2021, it promptly fell off a cliff and lost $150 in just a few days. Today it sits around $1,850, having crept up a little over the last couple of days. As is so often the case, the miners have been worse than the metal. The miners are now, on average, just over 25% off their August highs, and the smaller, more speculative plays uh, are down by more. And that's official bear market territory. Although, I have to say, with miners, the swings can be so great that the official bear market threshold, which is 20% equals a bear market, perhaps shouldn't apply. Nevertheless, the elation of the second and third quarters of 2020 has turned to grinding despondency. And we're nowhere near the sentiment lows of 2015. Money's still being raised, exploration is still taking pay place. A genuine discovery will find some reward in the marketplace. But investors are certainly cursing. And it's particularly galling for the investor who's gone into gold because of his concerns about money printing because the, the other alternative apolitical money, Bitcoin, or gold 2.0 as now some people are calling it, keeps on going higher and higher. But I'd like to console gold bulls with an observation I've made several times over the years, which is that when gold has one of its big runs, as it did in 2020, going from 1450 in March through to $2,080 in August, it tends to go into these periods of frustrating consolidation that can last a year or more. Uh, veterans might remember the gold bull, gold bull market of the noughties, and super veterans might even remember that of the 1970s. And they might remember those decades as bull markets, times of bonanza and elation, but those epic bull markets were quite frequently punctuated with extended periods of consolidation and pullback, bear markets even, if you want to use that word. And these went on for many months, in some cases, years. I remember one in the noughties when gold made a high in spring 2006 and it then went nowhere for 18 months and didn't get above its 2006 highs until the winter of 2007. It made another early high in 2008 that it didn't get through until late 2009. And in the 1970s, gold didn't get above its 1974-75 high until 1978 and then it went to the moon. So. Extended periods of consolidation are common features of long-term bull markets and if you're convinced of the investment case uh, for an asset, often some patience is required until the rest of the market comes round to the same way of thinking as you and then the price starts to go up. Even the apparently immune asset that is Bitcoin enjoys extended periods of consolidation. Crypto winters, they're known as. The case for gold, sound money in an age of money printing, remains strong. And now this is what does concern me, and it's a subject I've touched on before. And this is the rise of digital technology. It, it's seen extraordinary value ascribed to digital assets, whether they be tech stocks or cryptocurrencies. And the digital economy has, since probably since the late 1980s, eclipsed the physical economy in terms of growth. It's just so much more scalable. Now, gold is as physical an asset as you can get. Being indestructible as it is, it is in many ways the most physical asset there is, the ultimate analog asset. But in a digital age, who cares about analog assets? This is the age of, of the digital nomad, the asset light generation that rents rather than owns. And it's something that's troubled me for quite a while. It's all very well saying gold is natural money, gold has been money for thousands of years, the horse was transport for thousands of years, and then along came the car. Is gold as irrelevant to the modern economy as the horse now is 
to transport. Now, something else that I've thought about with digital technology is its longevity. You compare all the information you might have on your bookshelf and all the information you have on your computer. How long will your hard drive last for? What will last longer, the photo on your phone that you never print or the photo that you do actually print and realise in the physical world? So I was quite excited to see an announcement from the Canadian listed company Gold Money a few days ago for a new technology in one of its subsidiary companies, Toten Pass. Now Toten Pass has been developing, and I quote, a permanent digital storage drive constructed from solid gold that requires no energy and has no movable parts. Digital data is written onto the drive by way of a proprietary light diffraction process which imprints images, documents and other files that can be stored either as human readable without the aid of computers or machine readable with the employ of, of a smartphone. And carrying on quoting, this technology allows for the permanent storage of precious digital data, thereby eliminating any future dependence on the internet and the vast amounts of energy required presently to store content. By consequence, this technology will empower both individuals and corporations to decentralize, preserve and fully control their precious data once and forever. Now this is back to me talking now. Here it seems is a very modern application for the extraordinary permanence of gold and I cannot begin to comment on how well the technology works but it does make a lot of intuitive intuitive sense to me. It's like a sort of modern version of Egyptian hieroglyphs but even stone on which the hieroglyphs were written erodes but pictures instead etched into gold would be even more permanent and hopefully it will allay some of my concerns about this, this very analogue asset. Any, in any case, thank you very much for watching everyone. Please uh, subscribe with my channel and I'll be back with another video very soon.